It was the first day at the Intergalactic Academy, and the air was alive with the buzz of myriad alien languages and the soft whir of anti-gravity devices. The Academy was nestled on a neutral asteroid, chosen for its accessibility from multiple wormholes and warp points scattered throughout the galaxy. This institution was a melting pot of the universe's brightest young minds, and today, they welcomed their first ever student from Earth, Jace. As Jace strode through the towering glass and steel corridors of the Academy, his steps were heavy with both anticipation and the gravity adjuster strapped to his back, designed to mimic Earth's stronger gravitational pull. Around him, beings of various forms and sizes moved about, some floated by effortlessly, their bodies perfectly adapted to zero-G environments, while others, like the crystalline shards from Orion 5, clicked and clacked along on multifaceted legs. Jace was a sight that drew the eye, not just because he was human, a rarity in this part of the cosmos, but also because of his casual attire, which starkly contrasted with the elaborate ceremonial robes and shimmering energy fields worn by other students. His plain t-shirt and jeans, adorned with a simple backpack, marked him distinctly as an outsider. In the Grand Orientation Hall, holographic banners floated, displaying welcoming messages in countless languages. Jace found his translated to a simple, Welcome Jace from Earth, accompanied by an image of his home planet, a lush blue and green sphere wrapped in white clouds. As he found a seat among the crowd, a small group of curious students gathered around him. A tall, slender figure with skin like the night sky speckled with stars, a Zetharian, extended a hand. I'm Lyris. What's it like on a death world? She asked, her voice a melodious hum that filled the air around them. Jace smiled, sensing the mix of curiosity and apprehension in her tone. It's not so bad once you get used to dodging hurricanes, outrunning wildfires, and occasionally convincing bears you're not a snack, he replied. His tone light but his eyes sparkling with the thrill of his experiences. Another student, this one covered in iridescent scales, chimed in. I heard Earth has hundreds of languages and even more cultures. How do you manage to learn all that? We grow up with it, Jay shrugged. Plus, we have technology to help us bridge the gaps. It's like here how we all use universal translators to communicate. The bell chimed, and a hush fell over the crowd as the dean, a venerable old Tormac with four eyes and a gentle demeanor, took the stage. His voice boomed out, amplified to reach every ear, no matter their auditory range. Welcome to all new students. Here at the Intergalactic Academy, you will learn not just academic knowledge, but also the values of cooperation and understanding across cultures. You come from many worlds, but here you are one community. Look around you. Your classmates are your team, your challenges are shared, and your successes will be celebrated together. As the dean continued with his speech, Jace felt a growing sense of pride and excitement. He was not just a representative of Earth, he was its ambassador. Here, at the edge of known space, he would show the galaxy not just what it meant to be human, but what a human could do. As the orientation concluded, the students dispersed, buzzing with excitement about the first challenge that awaited them. The Intergalactic Academy was renowned for its rigorous and innovative training programs, designed to push students to their limits and beyond. Today's task was no different. It was a simulated environment exercise, one that would test their physical and mental agility. Jace, already accustomed to Earth's harsh terrains and unpredictable weather, felt a rush of adrenaline at the prospect. He followed the throng to the Simulation Dome, a massive structure capable of replicating any environment from the known universe. Today, it would create a dense, jungle-like setting reminiscent of Earth's Amazon, complete with high humidity, thick vegetation, and the constant calls of hidden wildlife. The students gathered in the briefing room where Instructor Villar, a scaled and multi-eyed creature from Silax 3, explained the challenge. You will need to navigate through the jungle to retrieve a data beacon placed at its center. The environment is designed to be disorienting, testing your navigation skills and your ability to adapt to new and challenging conditions. Remember, teamwork is encouraged, but individual performance will also be evaluated. As the large doors to the simulation dome slid open, a wave of moist, warm air washed over them. Jace took a deep breath, the scents and sounds transporting him back to his time exploring the natural reserves on Earth. Beside him, a pair of Nari twins from a desert planet looked overwhelmed by the humidity and dense foliage. Stick with me, 
Jace offered with a reassuring smile. I've dealt with environments like this before. Grateful, they nodded, and the trio stepped into the simulation. The jungle was a riot of colors and sounds. Towering trees with wide, leafy canopies blocked most of the sunlight, casting everything in deep green hues. Vines hung like curtains, and the ground was a carpet of thick ferns and moss. Jace took the lead, his eyes scanning the surroundings for the safest paths. He showed his team how to mark their trail to avoid going in circles, a simple survival trick from his Earth scouting days. As they ventured deeper, mechanical sounds hinted at the presence of simulated predators, adding another layer of challenge to their task. Always stay alert, Jace advised, his voice low. Predators aren't the only danger in a jungle. Sometimes the environment itself is against you. His warning came just in time as a sudden shift in the terrain revealed a hidden bog. Jace quickly pulled back one of the Nari twins, saving her from stepping into the deceptive muck. Thanks, Jace, she gasped, her wide eyes reflecting both fear and admiration. No problem, Jace replied. Always watch your footing and stick to solid ground when you can. After what felt like hours, the team heard the faint beeping of the data beacon. Energized, they quickened their pace, navigating through a particularly dense thicket to find the beacon perched atop a small hill. Jace climbed up first, retrieving the beacon with a triumphant grin. Challenge complete, he announced, holding the beacon high. The rest of the team cheered, their initial nervousness replaced by a sense of accomplishment and unity. As they made their way back to the exit, Jace's teammates couldn't stop talking about the experience. You really know your way around these kinds of places, don't you? One of the twins remarked. Yeah, Jace laughed. You could say I had a pretty wild upbringing. After the day's physical exertions, the evening brought a much-needed respite for the students at the Intergalactic Academy. Gathered around a large holographic campfire that mimicked the warm glow and crackling sounds of a real one, the students relaxed under the simulated night sky. This was a time for camaraderie and sharing tales from their diverse homeworlds, a tradition meant to foster understanding and strengthen bonds among the interstellar student body. Jace found himself in a cozy circle with Lyris, the Zetharian he'd met during orientation, and several other classmates from various corners of the galaxy. As they roasted synthetic marshmallows over the holographic flames, students took turns telling stories about their planets, their cultures, and the most thrilling experiences of their lives. When Jace's turn came, the group leaned in, their faces illuminated by the flickering light, eager to hear more about the mysterious and dangerous Earth. I'll tell you about the time I went face to face with one of Earth's most feared creatures, Jace began, his voice tinged with excitement and nostalgia. It was during a dive in the Great Barrier Reef, a beautiful but perilous underwater ecosystem on Earth. The students' eyes widened as Jace described the vibrant corals and the myriad of colorful fish that darted through the water, creating a spectacle of natural beauty. But the reef is also home to sharks, creatures respected and feared for their power and predatory skills. That day I encountered a great white shark, one of the largest and most formidable. He paused for effect, gauging the reactions around him. Some students shifted uneasily, their own worlds devoid of such fearsome predators. The shark circled closer and closer, its eyes unblinking and fixed on me, Jace continued. In that moment it was just me and the shark in the vast ocean. But instead of panic I felt an incredible rush. On Earth we learn to respect nature's might to understand it rather than fear it outright. How did you escape? One of the twins from the desert planet asked, her voice a mixture of fear and fascination. Jace smiled. Great whites are curious but cautious. I stayed calm, kept my movements slow and deliberate, showing I wasn't prey or a threat. After a few tense moments, the shark decided I wasn't interesting and swam away. It was a breathtaking experience and a profound reminder of Earth's untamed wilderness. The group remained silent for a moment, lost in the imagery Jace had created. Then the campfire flickered, prompting a shift in the mood as another student prepared to share their story. As the night wore on and more tales were told, Jace listened intently, absorbing stories of ice-covered moons, cities in the clouds, and creatures made of pure energy. The differences in their stories were vast, but a common thread emerged, a deep-seated respect for the mysteries and dangers of their worlds. The morning after the storytelling session brought a fresh challenge, the Gravity Games, an intense competition designed to test how well the students could adapt to and navigate environments with varying gravitational forces. 
The event was a highlight at the Intergalactic Academy, simulating the conditions of different planets and moons that the students might encounter in their future explorations or assignments. Jace, equipped with his Earth-adapted muscles and a lifetime of adjusting to different training environments, felt a rush of competitive spirit. The arena for the Gravity Games was a massive dome, segmented into different zones each mimicking a specific planetary gravity, ranging from the light pull of a small asteroid to the heavy crush of a gas giant. As the students gathered in the arena, Instructor Velar explained the rules. You will move through the zones, completing tasks that require both physical and mental agility. Your performance under each gravity condition will be assessed. Remember, the ability to adapt quickly is key to survival in the universe. Jace's first task was in the low-gravity zone, designed like the surface of Mars. He found himself bounding effortlessly, using long, controlled jumps to navigate between platforms. Around him, some of his classmates struggled with the unfamiliar lightness, their movements erratic and uncoordinated. Use your momentum and aim your jumps carefully, Jace called out to a struggling classmate from a high-gravity planet, who nodded gratefully and began to adjust his technique. Next, the students entered a medium-gravity zone, similar to Earth's gravity. Here, Jace moved with confident ease, feeling right at home. He completed obstacle courses that involved climbing, swinging across gaps, and balancing on narrow beams, all tasks he had trained for back on Earth. The final challenge was the high-gravity zone, simulating the oppressive force of a gas giant's gravity well. Even Jace felt the strain as his body weighed down, each movement requiring immense effort. The atmosphere was thick and heavy, making breathing laborious. Keep pushing, everyone. We can do this, Jace encouraged his peers, noticing the fatigue setting in among the group. Using techniques he had learned during his Earth-based astronaut training, Jace focused on leveraging his strength and maintaining efficient movements to conserve energy. Despite the difficulty, he managed to complete the tasks, including lifting heavy objects and navigating through a dense obstacle course designed to simulate a cluttered industrial environment. As the Gravity Games concluded, the students, exhausted but exhilarated, gathered in the central viewing area of the dome. Instructor Villar announced the results, praising their efforts and adaptability. Jace, from Earth, demonstrated exceptional prowess across all gravity zones, showing a remarkable ability to adapt and lead, Villar declared, making Jace blush slightly under the spotlight. The applause from his classmates was warm and genuine, and many approached him afterward asking for tips on how to handle different gravitational environments. That was incredible, Jace, Lyra said, floating slightly in the reduced gravity of the rest area. You've got to show me how to manage those jumps in low grav zones. Sure thing, Lyris, it's all about practice and understanding your body's response, Jace replied, eager to share his knowledge. With the physical challenges of the gravity games behind them, the next test for the students at the Intergalactic Academy was a test of intellect and strategy. The Duel of Wits was a highly anticipated debate competition where students were paired against one another to argue on various complex topics ranging from ethics in interstellar exploration to strategies for managing scarce resources on newly colonized planets. Jace, whose experiences on Earth had provided him with a practical and often unique perspective, was matched against Tavril, a renowned strategist from the technologically advanced planet Gliza. Their topic? Is reliance on technology or adaptation to the environment more vital for survival in unknown territories? As the debate stage was set in the auditorium, students filled the seats, buzzing with excitement and discussing their predictions for the matchups. Jace felt a flutter of nervousness but steadied himself with deep breaths, recalling the countless challenging situations back on Earth that had honed his decision making skills under pressure. Tavril opened the debate with a strong argument for technology detailing how Glesian explorers used advanced tech to terraform inhospitable environments and create sustainable ecosystems. Without our technological advancements, survival would not only be a challenge, it would be impossible, Tavril concluded, his voice resonant and confident. Jace listened intently, nodding in acknowledgement of Tavril's points. However, when it was his turn to speak, he leaned forward, his expression earnest. Technology indeed makes life easier and helps us reach and adapt to new worlds. But it's not just about surviving, it's about thriving. On Earth, we've learned that adaptation involves understanding and respecting our environment. This means adapting our methods to suit our surroundings, not forcing the surroundings to suit our methods. Jay shared stories of Earth's diverse ecosystems, 
where humans had learned to live in harmony with nature rather than dominating it. He spoke of indigenous cultures that thrived by respecting and adapting to their environment, using technology as a tool, not a crutch. The audience was captivated, drawn in by the contrast between Jace's examples of Earth's resilience and Tavril's visions of technological supremacy. The debate continued with a lively exchange of ideas, each student countering the other's points with well-thought-out arguments and respectful rebuttals. As the duel concluded, the judges, esteemed scholars from various scientific disciplines, deliberated over the arguments presented. Finally, the chief judge stood to announce the decision. This debate has shown us two valid perspectives on survival and adaptation. However, the winner is Jace from Earth, whose arguments about the importance of biological and psychological adaptation, alongside technological aid, presented a balanced view of survival in unknown territories. The auditorium erupted in applause and Jace felt a rush of relief and pride. Tavril approached him afterward, extending a hand. Your perspective has given me a lot to think about, Jace. Perhaps there is room for a balance between our views. Definitely, Jace agreed, shaking Tavril's hand. I believe technology and adaptation can go hand in hand. The duel of wits was not just a victory for Jace, but a learning experience that echoed throughout the student body, encouraging them to think critically about the role of technology and environmental adaptation in the future of interstellar exploration. Following the intellectually charged duel of wits, the Academy's next challenge shifted back to the realm of physical and survival skills. This time, the simulation was far more intense, a replication of a hostile, alien environment where students had to evade and outsmart various simulated predators. The exercise was designed to test their tactical thinking, stealth, and crisis management under pressure. Jace, fresh off his debate victory, approached this new challenge with a blend of enthusiasm and caution. The simulation took place in a vast, enclosed arena, designed to mimic a dense alien forest with thick fog reducing visibility to a few meters. The setting was unnervingly silent, the quiet only broken by occasional rustles and distant roars. As the students entered the arena, each was equipped with a basic survival kit and a tracking device to monitor their movements and vitals. The objective was clear. Survive the simulated encounter with the deadliest predators from various planets and make it to the extraction point on the other side of the forest. Remember, these predators are programmed to be extremely dangerous, but they are not unbeatable. Instructor Velar briefed them with a stern look. Use your surroundings to your advantage, stay alert, and above all, keep moving. Jace paired up with Lyris and a few others, forming a small group to increase their chances of survival. As they ventured deeper into the forest, the fog thickened, making it nearly impossible to see beyond a few steps. Jace's heart raced, but his mind was clear focused on the sounds and slight movements around him. Suddenly, a shadow darted through the mist, its movements too swift to track. Jace's instincts kicked in. Drop, he hissed to his group, throwing himself to the ground. A creature whizzed overhead, its form a blur of spikes and scales. The group remained still, barely breathing until the danger passed. Was that a Krylock beast? whispered one of the team members, referring to a notorious predator known for its speed and ferocity. Couldn't tell, Jace murmured back, but let's not stick around to find out. They moved cautiously, using natural cover and occasionally creating diversions to mislead any followers. Jace remembered his encounters with Earth's wildlife, where staying downwind and minimizing noise had allowed him to observe animals without becoming prey himself. He applied the same principles now, guiding his teammates to use the terrain to their advantage. The climax of the simulation arrived when they encountered the simulated version of Earth's most feared predator, the tiger. It was a perfect replica, down to the intimidating stare and powerful build. Jace felt a mix of fear and admiration. The tiger was a symbol of Earth's untamed wilderness, a creature of both beauty and danger. Using a combination of distraction and a well-placed trap they had prepared earlier, Jace led the team in neutralizing the threat. They maneuvered around the tiger, slowly directing it towards the trap using small noises and movements. Once the creature was safely contained, they quickly made their way to the extraction point. Upon exiting the simulation, the students were met with cheers and commendations from their instructors and peers. Instructor Velar, in particular, praised their teamwork and ingenuity. You've shown remarkable composure and resourcefulness, Velar commented, clapping Jace on the shoulder. 
Your understanding of predator behavior, especially that of your earth tiger, was impressive. Jay smiled, feeling a deep sense of satisfaction. Thanks, instructor. It's about understanding and respecting these creatures, whether they're from Earth or elsewhere. The unseen predator simulation reinforced the importance of strategic thinking and environmental awareness, qualities that Jace had mastered on Earth and now successfully applied in a broader galactic context. His leadership and calm under pressure not only helped his team survive, but also highlighted his growth as a formidable student at the Intergalactic Academy. As the semester drew to a close at the Intergalactic Academy, the ultimate challenge was unveiled to the students, a survival test on a deserted planetoid. This final test was not just a measure of the students' ability to apply their learned skills in a real-world scenario, but also a testament to their leadership and teamwork capabilities. Jace, having proven his mettle in both intellectual and physical challenges, was selected as one of the team leaders for this exercise. His team consisted of a diverse group of classmates, including Lyris, the twins from the desert planet, and a few others who had shown exceptional skills throughout the semester. The planetoid they were transported to was barren and harsh, with extreme temperature fluctuations and minimal natural resources. The terrain was a mix of rocky landscapes and sparse vegetation, offering little shelter from the elements. All right, team, Jace began, gathering his group as they stood on the rocky surface, their survival gear in hand. Our first priority is to establish a base camp near that ridge for shelter. Then, we'll scout for water sources and edible plants. His teammates nodded, their faces set with determination. They quickly got to work, using the skills they had honed over the semester. Jace led the way in constructing a basic shelter, using the planetoid's rocky outcrops to their advantage. They created insulation with materials from their kits, adapted to keep the harsh winds at bay. As the day progressed, Jace split the team into groups for scouting missions. He took the lead on one such mission to locate water. Remembering his training on Earth, he guided them to look for signs of moisture along the terrain, which led them to a small underground spring, a vital find. The days on the planetoid were long and grueling, but under Jace's leadership, the team managed not only to survive, but to thrive. They set up solar collectors from their kits to harness energy, and Lyris, using her knowledge of astrobotany, identified native plants that were safe to eat. One night, as they gathered around a makeshift heater, sharing rations and stories, Jace felt a profound sense of camaraderie and pride in his team. We've done more than just survive. We've learned to live with the land, not just off it, he reflected aloud. Lyra smiled. You've taught us that, Jace. Back home, I never had to think about these things. It's all automated. But now, I see the value in understanding and connecting with our environment. As the test concluded, the instructors conducted a thorough review of their setup and strategies. The feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Jason and his team had not only demonstrated their survival skills, but had also shown an exceptional ability to work together under pressure. The ride back to the academy was filled with laughter and shared relief. They had passed the final test, and in doing so, had forged bonds that would last a lifetime. On graduation day, as Jay stood among his peers, he realized how much he had grown. From the unsure newcomer who had first walked into the academy to the confident leader he had become, his journey was a testament to the resilience and spirit of Earth. You've not only survived, the dean said during the ceremony, you've also taught us the value of Earth's tenacity and spirit. On graduation day at the Intergalactic Academy, the atmosphere was charged with excitement and a touch of nostalgia as the students prepared to conclude their transformative journey. The Grand Hall of the Academy was decked out in vibrant banners representing the myriad planets and species of the graduating class. Proud family members and friends from across the galaxy filled the seats, their diverse forms a vivid tapestry of interstellar community. Jace stood among his classmates, clad in the traditional graduation robe that now bore the insignia of Earth, a planet newly respected within the academic community for its resilient and adaptable representatives. He felt a surge of pride and a bittersweet pang as he looked around at the faces he had come to know and admire. The ceremony began with the procession of the faculty, followed by a speech from the dean, a wise and venerable figure who had guided them through their academic and personal growth. Today we celebrate not just the achievements of our graduates in academia and training, the dean spoke, his voice echoing throughout the hall, but also the invaluable experiences and perspectives they have shared with us. As the dean continued, 
he specifically highlighted the unique contributions of the Earth representative. Jace has shown us the strength and spirit of Earth, a planet rich in diversity and challenges. He has not only faced our most rigorous tests, but has also instilled in us a deep appreciation for the resilience required to thrive on such a world. The crowd responded with enthusiastic applause, many nodding in agreement, having personally witnessed or heard of Jace's remarkable adaptability and leadership. When it was time for the graduates to receive their diplomas, Jace's name was called, and he walked across the stage with a confident stride. As he accepted his diploma, the applause was louder, filled with cheers and whistles. He smiled, his heart full, as he scanned the crowd spotting Lyris, the twins, and other friends who were cheering wildly for him. Following the formalities, the graduates threw their caps into the air, a traditional earth gesture of celebration that had been enthusiastically adopted by the academy. The caps floated, some hovering in the low gravity, creating a moment of joyous chaos. The celebration moved outside, where tables laden with foods from various worlds had been arranged. Jace mingled among his friends and their families, sharing laughter and promises to stay connected. The discussions were lively, with plans for future meetups and potential collaborations across galaxies. As the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the gathering, Jace felt a profound connection to these people in this place. I came here from Earth, thinking I'd learn about the universe, he mused aloud to Lyris and the others. But I've learned just as much about myself and what we as a diverse community can achieve together. Lyris smiled, her eyes twinkling. And we've learned from you, Jace. You brought a piece of Earth to all of us. As the evening drew to a close, Jace looked up at the stars, feeling ready for whatever new challenges awaited him in the vast expanse of space. With the skills, knowledge, and friendships he had gained at the Intergalactic Academy, he was more than equipped to face them. Earth had sent him to learn, but in return, he had taught them all the meaning of perseverance and unity and diversity. Graduation day was not just an end, but a beginning, a gateway to the boundless opportunities of the cosmos. For Jace and his classmates, the future was as bright and promising as the starlit sky above them.